about the um, situation in the Soviet Union in the late 1920s and 1930s, really to have a look at the kind of motives and ideas that Stalin has as he launches what we call the Great Turn, that program of collectivization, industrialization that kind of devastates and modernizes Russia at the same time. And this quote is something that's written um, by Stalin. He, he, he actually is quoting Lenin, either perish or overtake and outstrip the advanced capitalist countries. And then in Pravda, he then adds his own ideas. We've got to catch up, okay? And remember, of course, the key element of this kind of rapid idea, this great time. We've got to drag ourselves out of a 19th century rural economy, modernize, industrialize, and socialize, turn Russia, the Soviet Union, into a socialist country. So you would use this information on paper too. And Stalin's domestic policy is, remember, Marxism is the whole idea of becoming a communist country is based on fundamental economic changes in any society, how wealth is distributed. And remember, of course, a communist country is an industrial country. So you can use the great turn, you can use collectivization, you can use industrialization as key elements really in any essay where you would be writing about Stalin's domestic policy talking about how he aims to introduce his kind of election, if it was an election, his kind of leadership promise, um, socialism in one country. Look at how he turns Russia, the Soviet Union, into a kind of economic powerhouse, how he brings his ideology to life, the practical realisation of communism, how he's going to use terror to get what he wants, and how, of course, it's going to affect ordinary people. So the Soviet Union has had one revolution. They've had the Bolshevik Revolution of November 1917. And Stalin now is looking to make his mark on history. He's looking to add to the legacy of Lenin. He's looking to develop his ideas. And remember, of course, the huge impact of the NEP, the new economic policy, how many Bolsheviks felt compromised by those little capitalist concessions, those little net men, the profiteering that was going on under the NEP, never mind that the Russian economy was basically recovering to pre-World War I levels as a result of the NEP. It is an economic communism. And um, this is acknowledged at the 15th Party Congress in December 1927. Peasants were not becoming socialists. And remember, the peasants are by far the largest group in Russian society and by far the most inclined to be counter-revolutionary. Remember the kind of hatred and vitriol that Lenin and Stalin reserve for the peasants. They're petty bourgeois. All they want is a bigger farm. They're all they want is to own land. And instead, they're profiteering, they're keeping their seed stock, they're selling surplus food for a profit, all of those types of things. Socialism is failing in the countryside. So one of the key aspects of introducing the Great Turn is to socialise the country and therefore the majority of the Russian population. Obviously, the Soviet Union is alone in the world in 19. 29. They have no foreign allies with the exception of Germany. And remember, Germany is simply an outcast as well at this time as a result of the First World War. So the Soviet Union needs to become strong. It needs to become powerful. There will be a war. Stalin was right in his prediction, of course, in 1941, Germany does invade. And in in 1927, there's a similar war scale. There's a breakdown in communication where the, the Soviet leadership genuinely believes there's going to be a war. We've seen Russian disasters in the First World War, the Battle of Tannenberg, where Germany just walks all over the Russians because of the poor Russian military infrastructure. That can't happen again. So we, the Soviet Union needs to be ready for war. In the leadership struggle, Stalin made a promise. He promised socialism in one country. He promised the Soviet people stability. He promised them goods, he promised them productivity, and now he has to deliver that promise. You know, people didn't want what Trotsky had to offer, permanent revolution, constant change, constant uprising. And so Stalin needs to be 
to deliver on his promise. The picture at the bottom is of a modern-day Magnitogorsk, of course, one of the huge centers of Soviet industrial production. So Stalin has to deliver his promise, and he also has to prepare for that inevitable war by moving the Soviet Union away from dependency on Western manufactured goods. Food shortages throughout Russian history have been a persistent problem, and there is also a feeling that peasants were controlling or manipulating the food supply in order to try and meet their agenda. So there's a number of factors going on here. We really, grain supplies need to be increased. We can't have an industrial working population remaining unfed. So we need to develop a farming system, an agricultural system, that will enable less people to grow more food. And those people can be released from working on the land to working in industry and in factories. So in terms of where we're going, we need to move towards a socialist state. And a socialist state is one that is industrialized. Marx makes that very clear indeed, that it's only through industrialization that socialism can be achieved. Stalin also wanted to prove that he was a worthy successor of Lenin, that he was going to... Um, be able to kind of identify his own ideology and he was going to be able to move towards that socialist state that Lenin had started. Improving living standards was another key aim and really this is the key area for what Stalin wanted to do. He wants to deliver his promises. Life in Russia at this time is utterly miserable with huge numbers of orphans from the Russian Civil War and we've got criminal gangs of kids, you know, pestering the streets. We've got huge areas of rural poverty. The whole point of communism is that life should be good for everybody. Okay. Um, in terms, then, of the relationship between industrialization and agriculture, industry depends on agriculture. You can't have an industrial society unless you have people available to work in it. Those people need feeding. So we need to invest money, we need to be able to buy machinery and buy equipment, so we have to sell the extra grain that we're working on, we need to release peasants from the fields to work in the factories, and in order to do this, we need to have less people growing more food. So in order to industrialise, in order to modernise, the five-year plans come about for industry, and they are based on collectivization for agriculture. Central planning is introduced. Moscow will decide what people want, where things are going to be grown, and land is going to be socialized. There's going to be no more private ownership. That hard won benefit that the peasants had earned in 1917, that's going to be taken away from them. A new type of Russian is going to be introduced, and it's going to be Homo Sovieticus. The NEP cannot do this for us, and so the great turn is introduced, collectivization and industrialization as part of the five-year plans. Thanks for listening.